Hello, in this video I'm going to show the basics of using real-time software which comes with CSV Serial Sound Camera from SM Instruments. After you download and install the real-time software, open the program. By default, you will see a picture of sound camera in the display section. To look around the functions and different sections of the software, connect the sound camera either through LAN cable or wireless connection based on the model of your camera. When the camera is connected, two buttons in the down right corner of the software will turn into orange. They are called camera and DAQ. Camera button shows that sound camera is connected to the software and DAQ shows that the data is being transferred successfully between sound camera and the software. After the connection is established and DAQ is on, the main screen starts streaming the video captured by the optical camera in real time. In case of existence of any sound or noise source in the environment, you can see the beam power map displayed on the video. The panel located on the bottom of the screen is used for analyzing and viewing sound in time and frequency domain. There are series of buttons on top of the video screen which are essentially for tasks such as replay, stop, record, open, save, and taking a screenshot. The last button in this row is help. By pressing that, an extra folder containing application guide, quick start manual, and user guide will open. The first button in this row, which by default has orange color, shows the software in the recording mode and streams the video. When pressed, it changes into blue, which stops the real-time streaming of video because the software goes into replay mode. In this mode, you can replay a previously recorded video, change the speed of the video, and modify some of the settings from the right side panel. The right side panel in the software is used to control and modify the different aspects of sound visualization. By clicking on the numbering button, you can go through setting pages. Before we start changing the settings and recording the measurements, we need to adjust the gain. Go to page 2 of the setting in, into sound camera section. Gain is defined based on sound camera's dynamic range. The whole dynamic range is not available in one setting, so it is divided into four different ranges. The available dynamic range of the sound camera is 84 dB, with minimum of 36 dB for quietest to 120 dB for loudest sound source. You can see the range that each gain covers in the graph available in the user guide PDF. You should select the appropriate gain based on the maximum beam power level in your current environment. For measurement in quiet places like an echoic chamber with low sound pressure level, go for higher gain. And for, higher, and for measurements in a louder spectrum, try lower gains. In the current measurement based on the sound cam pressure level range, gain value of plus 20 is selected. Ideally, you need to calibrate your system before starting to record, but first you need to adjust the setting for having the appropriate beamforming map, so we go back to the first page. The first section shows the threshold in decibel scale. The value can be changed using the numerical box or the threshold meter. It adjusts the minimum beam power that will be visualized on the screen. It helps you to concentrate on your sound pressure level of interest. If the threshold level is higher than the maximum level, no beamforming map will be shown on the screen. Image range selects the range between the smallest and largest values of beam power gradient shown on the screen. Maximum value is measured on the detected source and minimum value is adjusted using the image range. The adjustments are based on your specific requirements, but in general you can increase image range to widen the beamforming map for higher frequencies and decrease it to shrink the map for lower frequencies. Image range holds the beam power visualization on the screen based on the averaging values. No averaging means each signal only appears in one frame that it happens. But with exponential and linear averaging, the beam power image is held on the screen for the defined period of time based on its perspective scale. For example, linear scaling is, used, is better used for stationary sound sources. 
You can see when NOAA upgrading is selected, the beam power map follows the source, the source movement without any delay, increasing the averaging coefficient, make the map changes slower. And in case of a moving sound source, it follows the source with some delay. The bottom part of the software shows a graph with power spectrum as its default. Two red dotted lines are low and high cutoff frequencies of the bandpass filter. The values can be changed numerically or directly on the graph by dragging the lines in preferred frequencies. You can also change the graph to level trend, one third octave, and time signal based on your required analysis. The selected values for image range, threshold, image average, and frequency range are shown as text on the video section. Maximum level denotes the maximum beam power value which is continuously detected from all the points in each frame. Position level shows the beam power value for a specified position on the video. If you move to the second page, you can see setting related to path, record, sound camera, and display configuration. In the first section, you can change the path folder and prefix of the file name. One important option available in the record section is the ability to record in trigger mode. In this mode, recording starts after a certain trigger level is surpassed and it continues for the duration specified by the user. The recording contains one second of data before the moment that trigger is activated. You can see the trigger level by changing the graph into level trend. Trigger level is specified by a yellow dotted line and the red dotted line denotes the threshold level. For example, here we set the trigger level at 60 decibel and for better visualization change the graph to level trend. As you can see, the program starts recording after trigger level is surpassed for the specified duration of 5 seconds here. Adjust display configuration based on your needs to make the visualization more informative and useful, like transparency, the color of informing map, or text. For image calibration, we move to the third page. This part removes the bias error from the system, so adjust it before recording. Calibration makes sure that the informing map is exactly located on the source. In order to calibrate, we use an identifiable source playing a 4 kHz frequency tone. Then relocate the center of the informing map to the actual sound source manually or using auto calibrate button. For using auto calibrate, press the button then drag the center of the beam power map to the center of sound source and change X and Y value of the beam power center manually as shown in this video. Here there are some advanced setup related to replay section. Audio filter option is used in replay mode. Normally when you play the recorded sound, the whole frequency band is played. But if the box is ticked, only the sound within the bandpass frequency is replayed. After selecting the preferred setting, you can start recording. If you need to record with a specific setting regularly or you want to keep your current setting, instead of adjusting it every time, save the setting preset. To do this, go to the bottom of first page and in the setting preset section, save or open your favorite setting. When you work with the recorded data in replay mode, you can play the recorded data in your preferred speed and readjust all the settings except for the frequencies of bandpass filter. In order to change the frequency range for the recorded data, another software called post-processing should be used. To learn about how to work with your recorded data, watch our next tutorial on post-processing software. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.